bring a lot of conditioning to the present moment. Even to the simple act of looking at something, listening to something, there's usually a motive. If you look at dependent core rising, the Buddha's map of how and why we suffer, you see that contact comes after a lot of other conditions. Intention comes before contact. The act of attention comes before contact. We're predisposed to look at certain things and to ignore others. And so, of course, our perception is going to be skewed. One of the things I noticed when I stayed with the John Fuang was a certain cynicism, or skepticism it might be a better word. He'd watch people for a long time before he trusted them. Sometimes he actually seemed suspicious of their motives. I know a lot of people who think that that's not the sign of an awakened person, but it's a sign of a very careful person. It comes from the fact that he had learned to be suspicious and skeptical of his own motives, his own conditioning, which is what you've got to do as a meditator. You've got to question the intentions that you bring to your practice, even to the simple practice of looking and listening to things, simple practice of watching your breath. You can't simply assume that you're coming here with really pure motives, because if you do, you miss out on a lot, and you never, never understand the conditioning that comes in, comes into play. This is one of the reasons why the Buddha, in prefacing his instructions on meditation, recommends restraint of the senses. Because if you practice restraint of the senses, after all, you begin to notice that the problem is not the things out there. The problem is your motivation for looking or listening to those things. The mind is primed to look for certain details. When it's a mood to be in a mood to be lustful, it's going to look for certain details. When it's in a mood to be angry, it's going to look for other details. The details may aggravate the lust or may aggravate the anger. But the fact is that you were already looking for trouble. And so this should alert you to the fact that some of the conditioning that you're bringing to the present moment, so that by the time when you come to sit down and look at the breath, you're also primed to look at what your preconceived conditions are, what your preconceived ideas are that might get in the way. Where is the breath? Independent core rising, it's down there in name and form. And even prior to that, it's in fabrication, sankara, right after ignorance. And if you look at your breath through ignorance, in other words, not looking at it in terms of Four Noble Truths, it can actually, even just the practice of breathing, together with your perceptions and feelings about the breath, can lead to suffering. Now notice the Buddha doesn't have you totally erase your conditioning when you look at the breath. There's never any mention of bare attention or bare awareness in his teachings. Instead, he says, learn how to condition your mind in such a way that it will be able to deal with the breath in a way that's going to lead to awakening. After all, the path to awakening is something conditioned. The Eightfold Path is a whole series of conditions. The only thing that's unconditioned in the Buddhist teachings is nirvana. This is why, instead of totally wiping out preconceived notions, we learn to question the preconceived notions we have and then replace them with ones that are actually going to be helpful, that point our attention in the right direction. That will ultimately lead to the unconditioned. So 
So let's look at that teaching on fabrication he has. What is there with the breathing? Well, there's also what he calls verbal fabrication and mental fabrication. The verbal fabrication is direct a thought and evaluation. Well, that's what you're supposed to bring to the breath as you meditate. You direct your thoughts to the breath, and then you evaluate how it's going. Is it comfortable? Is it not? That's looking at it in terms of the feelings, which are the mental fabrications. And then there are also the perceptions. These plays a play a huge role in how you relate to the breath. Learn how to question your preconceived notions about what's happening when you breathe. The breath, after all, is part of the wind element. And which are the elements that are doing the breathing? Well, the breath is what breathes. It's the, it's the element that puts everything else in motion. All too often we have the idea it's the solid parts of the body that have to be pushed out maybe by who might be the liquid element, who knows, that expand and pull the breath in. But it's actually the breath energy that pulls in more breath energy. Learn how to relate to the breath in that way. Your whole body, think of it as breath. And you find that whatever tight or constricted or uncomfortable ways you have of breathing tend to dissolve away. In other words, if there's a tightness in your stomach, it's not because the solid element down there has suddenly solidified. It's just that the breath is blocked. So think of it as not something solid down there that you're trying to push again, but simply as a blocked breath energy. Relate to it in that way. Bring that perception to the breathing. And you may find that it helps. So think of the breath as surrounding you. You're totally bathed in the breath, all around. Bring that perception to the breath and see what that does. And this will give you some insight into the simple process of conditioning. On the one hand, it makes it easier to sit here. You can sit for longer periods of time because it feels better. But at the same time, there's a certain amount of insight that arises as well. As you begin to see, oh, simply sitting here breathing, there are already other conditions. So the mind shapes the breath, shapes your experience of the breath, the perceptions that you bring, the feelings that you bring to it, can filter the way that you relate to a, such a basic process. And that should alert you to the way you relate to other processes as well, both within the body and outside dealing with other people. The more you're alert to your preconceived conditioning, the better off you are. When I was in Thailand, I was talking to a woman who was insisting that she'd finally achieved a state of mind where basically all her work was done as a meditator. And she said anger would arise and lust would arise, but it was perfectly automatic, and she simply had to watch it dissolve away, and that was it. I said, well, you have to look in. You're not seeing the conditions that are putting it together. And she was very resistant to that, so I stopped. Didn't say anything more. That's one of the big dangers in meditation, if you refuse to see the conditioning that you're bringing to what's happening. Everything seems automatic. Well, that's because you're not looking carefully. So this practice of playing with the breath, you're not just playing around. You're learning to explore the process of conditioning, trying to bring appropriate attention to what you're doing. In other words, see it in terms of the Four Noble Truths. You have certain ways of conceiving things that are going to create unnecessary stress, unnecessary suffering, and you can change those preconceived ways. But if you don't look for them, you're not going to see them. They just seem to be automatic, part of the landscape. And you never get to dig down and see exactly what you're bringing to the present moment. And at the same time, if you don't learn to develop a certain suspicion about your preconceived ideas, preconceived motives, you'll never see past them. It's part of being 
needful. So as you go through the day, be careful about how you look. No, 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 not, not your appearance, how you look at things. Try to catch sight of what your motives are. Put a question mark. And you begin to see things you didn't see before. And as that habit develops, you bring it to the meditation. When the breath seems to be going a certain way, ask yourself, well, is that actually what's happening? Is that actually what's going on? Particularly, look to the question of, is the breathing as comfortable as it could be? Am I doing anything to interfere with the process? Because if it's simply breath, breathing breath, there should be a real sense of lightness, fullness in the body. But if something seems to be getting in the way, the question is, is it what I'm doing now or is it something I did in the past? i.e., maybe there's, a, there's an illness in the body that comes from past karma. About which you can't do much, but you can change the way you relate to it, change the way you relate to any stress or pain in the body. Always think of the breath first. Look carefully when you're when there's pain in the body. Do you find yourself using the pain to breathe? If you catch yourself doing it, can you change? Think of breath breathing. The breath comes first. The breath comes before the pain. Think of it that way. See what it does. When you can learn to question things in this way, then you see things you didn't see before. And that's what the meditation is all about reaching the previously unreached, attaining the previously unattained, knowing things that you didn't know before. And the only way you can do this is to question the things that you take for granted. Most oftentimes those are the things that are actually blocking your vision. <laughs>